Okay, so let's talk about the ending of Better Call Saul, the series finale, the grand finale of the whole Breaking Bad universe. We are finally here, 14 years in, and we are here to finally see it all culminate. So let's get right into it. But before we do, I want to go ahead and ask you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Better Call Saul might have come to an end, but we still are going to talk about the show, analyze it, Breaking Bad, all of that. And let's get right into this finale. So pretty much at the end of the previous episode, Saul was on the run. He had been outed and everything, and the police were hot on his tail. He was trying to get the vacuum guy again. And for a split second there, I was thinking, all right, Saul, you made it. You're going to get the vacuum guy. This is it. This is it. Because after everything and all of that, we just come to know Jimmy McGill for the past 14 years, and we just wanted him to win, I guess you could say. Well, depending on how you feel about it, right? I think many people feel the other way, as we saw with Walter White. It was a huge hot topic discussion when the show first premiered. People catching up on it today, still a hot topic. But let's talk about exactly what happened next. So the police ended up getting our boy Jimmy, and Jimmy was going to face life plus like 100 plus years. They had all of these things going down the list that he was going to get, and we were thinking, it's over. It's over for Miguel, right? Also, we have Betsy Brandt coming in here to reprise her role as Marie, which I thought was cool because I think Marie was definitely a character that sort of got swept after the end of Breaking Bad, after what happened to Hank. And I think giving her more of this closure to her character, finally getting to confront at least somebody who had something to do with Hank's death was something great for the writers to do and sort of tighten this story up even more. So throughout the episode, we also have this whole um, thing with with Saul asking Mike about what he would do with a time machine and then he also asked this to Walt as well and all of this leads back into regrets that Saul is talking about. Mike of course has regrets he would want to go back to as well as Walt but it seems that anything that Jimmy talks about going back into the past for just involves money and so I think one of the most powerful lines in this whole like episode and for the show is when Walt says that he's always been like that Jimmy and I think that really kind of resonated with Jimmy after maybe thinking about it more and so we see Jimmy facing down this life of sentences going on and on. Maybe I think it was like 170 years that he was facing and ultimately was able to bring it down to seven years as he pretty much went to say that he was a victim in all of this. He didn't want to do this at all. And it was sort of Walt who kind of made him do it, sort of being a person that was threatened by Walt. And although you can kind of believe what Jimmy was saying here and it could sort of work in a way, we all knew the truth about it at the same time. But it seems like the people here didn't really. And so Jimmy was able to get the sentence all the way down to seven years after sort of procrastinating it and putting in different things and pretty much wasting time as he goes. And of course, people got like desperate of being in there and were just like, are we done here? Are we done? Ultimately, Jimmy says he has one more trump card, but as he's about to pull it, he pretty much is stopped by the other prosecutors who say nah we've already heard about this if you're going to talk about what happened to howard hamlin we pretty much know because kim actually gave a testimony about what happened here so you're you're, you're done you're done with this so jimmy's on his way now to accept his deal and pretty much just go about it to so seven years in a prison that's not so bad as it sounds and he's gonna get some bluebell ice cream and if you're anywhere near or you can get some bluebell ice cream trust me best ice cream you will have for sure i am a big fan of bluebell especially um, somebody being from texas you got to be a fan of bluebell so Definitely Jimmy is here excited on top of the world of everything. We go back to Kim who we know pretty much hates the life she's living, working in this place, making brochures and all of that. And she wants that like back to the law. So we see her go to volunteer to a law place that gives you free law stuff and all of this services, legal services, and she's going to volunteer her. While she's over there, she hears about what happened to Jimmy and pretty much we're told that Jimmy's going to testify something that will involve her. So she needs to be there. She is then going to Albuquerque now. So what happened here is that Jimmy asked his lawyer during the time they were on the plane about what exactly is going on with Kim after of course, hearing that Kim gave a testament about what happened to Howard. And so the lawyer tells him that Kim might not get in trouble legally. She still can get a civil lawsuit from Howard's widow. And this pretty much makes Jimmy wonder like, yeah, I need to like get Kim off the hook and all of this. So I need her to come down to my trial to hear everything I have to say. 
So once we get to the trial, it seems that Mr. Jimmy's going to get the seven years. The judge is kind of like, what is going on here? Why would he get seven years for everything he's done? And so the prosecution's about to talk about what exactly they came to the deal with. And then that's when Jimmy's like, I am going to talk. And he comes up to the podium and he spills everything. He says how he helped uh, Walter White, how pretty much Walter White would not be able to run what he ran if it wasn't for Jimmy because Jimmy pretty much kept them out of jail and from being dead. And so he was sort of like a mastermind behind all of it alongside Walter. So this whole empire would have been nothing if it wasn't for Jimmy. And I think that's the most honest thing we've ever heard because I think Walter White was a great chemist, but he never knew exactly how to run things and operations. And I think Jimmy being there to pick up his shit and clean it was definitely what made that operation more and of course this makes him even that much more of a person to be at fault for what happened here while all this is going on kim is there we also have marie as well as steven's widow as well so a lot of stuff just going down here he ultimately talks about how he like kind of like messed up with kim as well and sort of has a sort of one-to-one -one, heart to heart with her about what exactly transpired the night of everything that happened and how he would change things and we also hear him talk about what happened to howard and the resentment he has towards everything he let happen and just one of the biggest ones that really hits you right in the gut is definitely him talking about chuck and just how much he really made chuck and pushed him into that dark space we saw chuck at the end of his days in the season where he ultimately like died so i think that this is definitely one of the most heart-wrenching scenes to see because we know that jimmy's already not going to get the seven years and we know he's going to go to prison for pretty much life and now having to spill all of this out onto the court in front of kim in front of everybody you know that's definitely something that hurt him deep inside and i think this was the first time in a while especially in the better call saw show that we saw jimmy we saw the true jimmy here this was not saw goodman this was no persona or anything this was him being raw and just giving like everything to it and i think what made him feel this way was definitely helping kim out and giving her that closure as well especially how they left things off if you remember the episode where they showed her giving the divorce papers and all he didn't really put up a fight or anything for that to stop and he just pretty much says that without him and all of this all of these people wouldn't have had to die and all of these troubles and stuff wouldn't have happened and maybe he would have had a good life as well ultimately we end the season with jimmy in jail now all of the inmates seem to know him so he's pretty much got some like life going on in prison where everybody is really keen to him but we see that he has a lawyer visit him and it turns out it's kim who still has a way to get into the system even though she's not a lawyer anymore they ultimately share a cigarette as they would do in every episode of the previous seasons and just relax, you know, and it's just something that kind of like hits you bittersweet that they still are able to share this moment. But ultimately, you know that he's put away for good, as he says, 68 years. So there's that. So that's how our episode ends with them saying one final goodbye, separated by the chain link fence and just pretty much the end of it there so a very gut run I, I a very bittersweet end because at the end of the day kim and saul were there and they were able to be together but it's not really that together we wanted for them right like they're able to share a moment and continue on with their lives but they're never going to be together because he will always be in jail now and she's out there you know and I think that Kim at this point has pretty much seen that Jimmy was always there. And I think that's definitely makes it the saddest is that Jimmy was always there, but it's just Saul always took over the most. And what we see in those final moments that they share, honestly, it's already making me feel some type of way because it, it's just like Jimmy could have had something and it was just that Jimmy thing about him, that Saul Goodman thing about him that wanted more and ultimately led him down the road that he was led down, as he says, when he was thinking about Walter White and everything was the money. The money was there and that's all that he was wanting. And that pretty much led him to the dark path that he went down and the end right there. So will we see another um, Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, like something? 
well, according to Ben Skilligan, probably not for a while. Peter Gold says never say never. So could we see a spinoff film or something? You know, deep down in my heart, I was hoping for Saul to have some big escape from prison. Because at the end of the day, I just can't hate Jimmy. I don't know. I just wanted him and Kim to have a happy ending. But of course, we know he did a lot of wrong shit too. So yeah, that's, that's just my thoughts, my opinions on it and the ending, all of that. Pretty much, he couldn't live with having all of this for kim the final thing she would see of him being this like corrupt lawyer that helped like embezzle all of this money and pretty much was linked to all of these murders and bad shit that happened he needed kim to know how he atoned for all of this as well and i think he finally got that so let me know your thoughts and opinions on it on the episode and all of that what you thought about it and what do you think about this finale i think it was a great finale i think the series as a whole is better than breaking bad and i think it's one of the best tv shows in television history no doubt about that let me know your thoughts and opinions down below but as always as i said on the road to 25,000 subscribers let's get to it if you haven't already subscribed subscribe hit that notification bell we got a cinnabon recipe coming up tomorrow so stay tuned for that and as always i really really appreciate you if you watch the recaps of season six on my channel and all of that we are definitely trying to do some more stuff in the future as well with tv shows so definitely excited to do that but as always i'll see all of you next time stay safe stay positive